Keyframes in Clip Studio Paint. Where's the button? The button's right here. That button right there. Enable keyframes on this layer. So just to show you what I got in this file, we have a farmer doing squats, getting ready for the day's work. And once we have this animation folder highlighted, we can hit enable keyframes on this layer. And important distinction, thing to remember, do, do, do not, not forget, because it's just really annoying if you forget. While you have keyframes enabled on a layer, if you realize on this frame, oh shoot, his something's messed up, I gotta fix it. Why can't I draw? So remember, you have to disable the keyframes to be able to draw again. Now disabling them doesn't delete your keyframes, it just turns them off and then once you push the button, then they're back. So what can we change with keyframes? We can change position, rotation, and scale, and where your animation is on your canvas and everything. So right here, I have keyframes of him and he's shrinking. So I'll show you how I did that. If you have keyframes and you want to delete them, all you have to do is highlight them and then right click and hit delete at the top or you can hit delete all keyframes. Just don't hit delete frame, that actually deletes your drawings. So I'm gonna add a keyframe back at the start. This blue box around here, to get to that, all you have to do is hit the object tool. On the edges, you can make them bigger. If you go right outside the corner, you can hit the rotate. <laughs> that would actually be funny, let's do that. Let's make them start like that, rotate that way. Then here, in the middle somewhere, let's add a new keyframe and have them go this way. And then I wanted to go back to where he was, but instead of trying to guess it and then having to mess with it, I'm gonna go back to the first frame and then right click copy, then paste. So now what's he gonna do? That is a little bit slow. I feel like maybe he could do that two times. So I could highlight all these, right click copy, up paste. Now that's a lot more fun to watch than it was before. By the way, when you have keyframes like this, you can change something called interpolation. And I have a chart right here that I animated to show you what that's like. There's three different types. They're called hold, smooth, and linear. And that's what they look like. Smooth is gonna be for most things because it looks organic. You smooth into the motion and then you have a smooth stop. Linear is just the same incremental distance for every frame and then hold just holds that keyframes value up until the next keyframe and what interpolation are these keyframes at if you don't know you can highlight them all and right click the one that you can't click that's the one that they're on this is on smooth interpolation which is what you're going to want to use probably 80 percent of the time smooth really good for all organic characters if you happen to have a robot character try using linear that might be more robotic so now our farmer looks like he's having a pretty good time to make this even better, we could add a camera to zoom in and out as he's doing that. Let's see how that looks. So to add a camera to your file, you just go to animation, new animation layer, 2D camera folder. Now, this is really important, don't forget, and double check if you're having any problems because this might be the issue. You have to have your animation folder, in this case our farmer, inside the camera folder. Think of it as we're putting the farmer in the viewfinder of a camera, like if we're looking through the camera. So now our farmer can get affected by the camera and we have the camera layer right here selected on our timeline. And with that, we can hit add keyframe and that now makes this blue box appear. And that is what our camera is seeing. Right now it's right there. So I'm gonna hit add a keyframe somewhere here and let's zoom it in. To zoom it in, we gotta just make it smaller and if you want to zoom it in from the middle, all you have to do is hit Shift and Alt, hold that as you're clicking and dragging the corner. Sweet, and so now, to make it zoom in and out, all I have to do is hit copy these keyframes and then paste them down the line a bit. There we go. Ah, oh, but why, why, is, why are we seeing this blue box just get smaller and smaller, smaller and bigger? I wanna see the actual camera in work. That's pretty easy, all you have to do is go to animation, playback settings, render 2D camera, so now when we push play, we're gonna see through the camera. Now you might be thinking, is it possible to have two cameras in one project? Let's see. So let's go to animation, new animation layer, camera folder, now I have camera two. And I had this other animation folder with this girl here that I drew, so let's drag her into that camera, and then go to the camera here, make sure we're on the object tool in order to edit the camera. Let's make it pan up her body. 
Okay, so it does show both at the same time. That's pretty cool. So you can get some pretty crazy stuff by using cameras and keyframes. It really opens up the possibilities a lot. One thing that I should show you too, a subtle thing you should do with keyframes. This is something that separates amateur animators from ones that just seem a little bit more polished, a little bit more nice. This can apply for almost everything. I want to make it now zoom into her face really quick. All right, so now we have the second keyframe where it's zoomed into her face. And now the trick is to just go a couple keyframes later and then make it bounce out. Because when things go fast, they go whew. Everything adjusts as it goes quickly. And by including that in all of your keyframes, you can make things seem a little bit more bouncy and a little bit more lifelike. It seems less static. See, that extra pop adds a lot. I'm gonna delete that keyframe and let's see what it looks like now. Not as interesting, right? You can apply that to uh, animation too. Like if you have a character that, like a frog, that's gonna jump up, most animators might do it frame by frame and move him for every frame. Downside, that takes a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time, most people don't. The way to get by with only doing like as minimal drawings as possible is by doing keyframes, doing that bounce adjust effect. And you could do a frog hop with three different drawings. Seriously, try it out, use it all the time. It makes your animations a lot more bouncier and lively. That's it for today. I'll see you next time in the next clip studio paint tutorial.